Hello and welcome to the IMS YouTube channel. My name is Pulak Kumar Das and in this video, I'll be showing you a demo setup to help you get started with Istio and Open Telemetry for metrics, stresses and logging. Now, usually out of the box, the not really out of the box, but the add-ons that Istio provides, they will be sort of set up like this. So if you wanted to view all the traces, you have Yager set up and all the traces from the Istio proxies will go straight to a Zipkin endpoint, which in turn will send it to Yager. Similarly, for metrics, you have Prometheus uh, deployed. Prometheus will scrape all the data from the HDF proxy endpoints and anything else that it finds in the cluster, and it, it will be used as a data source for Grafana. So it will query the data and present it to you in a nice, simple fashion, and you can configure all the dashboards. So the goal of this is to sort of uh, have everything going through one single collector here, open telemetry collector in this case, and all of the metrics traces and logins should be viewable in a single app. And in fact, one of the benefits is that we'll be able to tie data together. So all the logs, for example, will come with the trace ID as part of the logs. And you can just click that right next to it and see the exact trace that uh, that log is related. And I'll, uh, I'll come to the setup later, like the deep setup. But for now, let's look at one thing here. So Open Telemetry Collector has a concept of uh, a pipeline and the pipeline is consistent of receivers, processors, and exporters. I'm not going to use any processes here. So usually a processor would be something like a memory limiter or a batch collector, for example. Uh, but again, I'm not going to use any of that. This is just a very simple getting started video. So you, you need to configure it as per your requirements. Another point of interest here is that we're dealing mostly with the HTA proxies here. If you want your application data to also come into the open data collector, you would enable an OTLP receiver and using the open telemetry auto instrumentation, you can send all the data straight from the application to open telemetry collector. But again, not for this uh, video. And so this Prometheus setup in particular would look a bit complicated as was this uh, Zipkin one, but the general idea is that by default, HTPoxy will send everything to a Zipkin endpoint, all the traces to a Zipkin endpoint rather. And that Zipkin endpoint will be pointing here instead to the open telemetry collector's uh, Zipkin receiver. And this Zipkin receiver will simply forward it to the open telemetry collector's Zipkin exporter. And this will forward it to Tempo. Similarly, for file logs, we'll be scraping all the data from the proxy containers and we'll forward it to Loki exporter, which in turn will forward it to the actual Loki instance. And similarly for uh, the metrics, the Prometheus receiver will go out and scrape all the data. So previously Prometheus instance was scraping the data, but here Prometheus receiver will scrape the data and then the Prometheus receiver will forward it to the Prometheus exporter, which will simply expose the metrics. So we will have a Prometheus instance as well, this instance and this are the same things, except this one would be configured to scrape everything in the cluster. Whereas here we'll only configure it to scrape only the exporter. And then we can set all three of us uh, a data source in Grafana. So let me pull in a couple of terminals. This one. The other one as well. So in the, in the bottom terminal, I'm running QCTL get pods and HTS system pods. So just to view the status of everything as they're being deployed. I'll also bring in configurations. So here are the configurations. Okay. Yeah. So we'll start with the H2 operator, which is here. Before going there, I'll have to set it up. So let me do software. HTML operator in it. So part of the configuration for receiving the logs is in here. So for whatever logs you are seeing here from proxies to file log, or rather from whatever file log was uh, scraping from the proxies, that configuration is over here. So in the mesh config, you can see the default access log file is set to the slash dev slash HTB out. So anytime any request comes in, that request will be logged into slash dev slash HTB out. And whatever you want to log, you can set it here in the access log format. For that, let me just all this. Yes, as I was saying, it will just log everything. So one line will be printed 
So this is one single line that you can see. And you can remove quite a lot of this. One key put part of configuration is this one. So I've written trace ID equals to this. So the actual um, XB3 trace ID header will be uh, sort of substituted into this percentage sign part. And you'll see how handy this is when we are linking the data with Loki. Uh, not Loki, sorry, tempo. And secondly, we I have configured the tracing sampling rate to 100%. Not really a required thing, but just for this demo, it will be easier to show. Uh, you can also configure the default air tracing endpoint here. But again, as I mentioned, I'll take advantage of a pick where Istio will send everything to zipkin.istio system service by default. So I'll just take advantage of that service and I'll create one, which will simply forward the data over to open to the right list. Uh, so now that this is done, let's uh, set up the Helm stuff. So I'll be installing Grafana, Tempo, and Loki from Helm. For that, you need to add the repo. Let me copy the file, link over. So you do add, and then you write the name of the repo itself. So we need Grafana. And we add in the list like this. And after running this command, you will also do Helm repo update. I already had it added, so let me just do the update first. Okay. Now, first and foremost, we'll start with so we'll do install and we'll name it tempo on our, on our cluster. The chart is Grafana slash tempo. Let me so we can take a system. The configuration is tempo.yml. So in the tempo configuration, we are simply uh, adding in all the logs. So whatever logs, whatever tests it creates, it, it will print them out to the log. And we are enabling the Zipkin receiver. There is no configuration here because we are using the default endpoint of Zipkin, which is 9411. So let's get on this. Now, after this, we will need to get the other things set up. So, Loki is the next one on the list. Loki, this will be Grafana slash Loki spec. And list your system. And we want to do Loki ML. So Loki ML, if you look at the Loki configuration, I have disabled all of the stuff here because I'm using the Loki stack. So you can only set up a Loki instance only. No Prometheus, no Prometheus. It this is also deployed. Before going to Grafana, I should apply the Prometheus ML and this one. So I could also do this with Helm, but this Prometheus ML is actually a modified version of the configuration that uh, Istio provides as part of its add-on. So most of this big configs are gone. It will only scrape hotel collector here, as you can see, every one minute. Uh, I've removed all the service account stuff because that will get reused for the open telemetry. That's why there's a system. Now that that is created, we can add in Grafana uh, store it. It'll take some time for everything to come up, so let's not wait for them. Grafana, so that is Grafana slash Grafana. Again, we missed your system, and it's our configuration is in Grafana.yml. If we look into this, we'll see three data sources have been set up tempo, this is the default tempo URL, Loki, and Prometheus. In the Loki one, you can see we are setting a derived field. So it will pull it from the table and it will take the trace ID match surrogates and it will match this part. So just to update it. Yes, so it will match this and it will pull out the trace ID from there. Move to Grafana. Okay, I think I passed that side twice. And keep in mind the username and password is down there. Make you can modify that if you prefer. Give it just a second. And we can start with. Okay, still not started. Let me start with the open telemetry collector then. So for the open telemetry collector, we will need a service account, as I mentioned. So if you look into the again, if you look into the Prometheus add-on that Istio provides, they will also have a service account set up because it needs to scrape out all the nodes and ports and everything. So for that, it will require this uh, RBAC policies. 
and I have sort of modified them to fit our open telemetry collector. So let us apply that first. Sorry, I think I forgot to do it in the main space. So the system. Now after this, we will run it. Vector in Istio system. Moving on to the collector, there are the most important things here is the configuration itself. You can see the three pipeline setup. So there is a Zipkin receiver, Zipkin exporter, PyLog receiver, and Loki exporter, and Prometheus receiver and exporter. So the PyLog uh, receiver will pull everything. Pull all the data from the var log containers and everything with Istio proxy in the name. I'll explain how we can access this later on, just down below. Zipkin receiver is 9411. And again, I have, there is a service you can see Zipkin in the Istio system is this, uh, exposing port 9411. So Istio will send everything to this by default, and we're just uh, reconfiguring it so it will come into the OPEL collector instead. There is a Prometheus uh, receiver. And in this one, we are setting up all the state configs. So you can see it is uh, trying to pull, it is trying to pull data from all the OK servers or the service endpoints here. There is also ports down below, but uh, it will also scrape itself for uh, any metrics that your uh, open telemetry collector will provide. All of this is there for the Prometheus. So this is like the largest configuration here. Most of it is just scrape this data, put it in this format, so on and so forth. Now there is the exporter section. In the exporters, we will have Zipkin. So the Zipkin exporters for Nempo is this. This is the URL we need to export the uh, make the traces to for Tempo to receive them. For Loki, we need to export to this API endpoint. And for Prometheus, we will be exposed it on this open telemetry character itself. And Prometheus will come and scrape it every one minute, as I had mentioned before. This one. So this one is tied back, tying back right here to this endpoint. Um, now coming down to the service, we have simply exposed all three endpoints that we need. So we need the Prometheus exporter endpoint, 1980. The 9411 is the Zipkin receiver endpoint, and the triple eight, uh, quadruple eight is the metrics for open telemetry collector. So this is Prometheus compatible metrics endpoint. So Prometheus can scrape this as well, but we are scraping ourselves in this case. Uh, again, this is the Zipkin dot Istio system service that we will be using. And coming to the open telemetry connector itself, instead of using a deployment or a pod, we will be using a daemon set here because the logs in this case that we're pulling from slash var log containers, these will be printed out to the to this particular, all the logs of all the pods and containers will be printed out to this location in the node itself. So because it is in the node itself, we need to have this open telemetry connector running on each and every node. And for that, we are using a daemon set. And secondly, we are, you can see we are having two mounts here, one for slash var log down here as well, and one for slash var lib docker containers. So the reason is that on this setup that I'm using at least on this cluster, slash var slash log, everything inside this will be sim linked into this part. It might be different for you. So do have a look and make sure that it is the same for you. And then you can apply the same sort of configuration. And now that we have now that this is set up, we should be having all the data flowing through, but we don't have a load yet. So let us just generate some load. So the first lab will be the following space. As your injection level. I'll apply two simple apps for YAML and also a sheet given. Sleep deployment is pretty simple. It simply runs the sleep commands and it also has the curl agent. So we'll use the curl from sleep and we'll use it to talk to HTVBIN. HTVBIN is just a very simple application used for testing. HTTP endpoints. So let me write the command for that. Exit and sleep for me. This sleep container itself. The command to run inside the container is curl. So we don't print out the 
like to call the progress report. Okay, so all the details of the headers. Okay, so to keep them, 8,000. Right, is it 8,000? Yeah, it is 8,000. And status 418. So this will give us a teapot. It is not up yet. Wait a second. Everything is up here. This is taking some time. Let's give it some time. Oh, it just happened. Okay. Yes, so we're getting a HTTP port as part of a HTTP standard. So let us run this every two seconds. So let's if I expand this, yeah, so we're getting it every two seconds. You can see it is running the command. Okay, now I will port forward it for this. I'm not going to set up the whole load balancer or anything like that. So let me just do the CPI port forward. So this is Grafana. The HTML system is this. We want to port forward to AP. On to port 881. Now note that I am actually SSH into this machine. Into, so all of these terminals are SSH into something else. And so I need to tell it to port forward it onto the address 0.0.0, .0, or the machine address, and so I can access it from this laptop that I'm using. But uh, yeah, so you don't need to add this uh, from this part of the argument. This is only for me. So this is going. This is also going. So let's go back to our and Alert not. All right, one and two is the section IP that I'm using to CTL from. So I can make this into handling password. Okay, everything loaded. Let's go into the data sources. Let's verify that everything is working. Again, they did a field that we're set up for trace ID from the like regular expression that you can see here. I hit seven test. Data source successfully connected. That one has also successfully created. And for working. Okay. Now, dashboards. Okay, sorry, we will not have any dashboards because this is the default Grafana configuration. So let's go into the explore instead. And let's start with the metrics. So we'll be able to see all the metrics. And if you wanted to see the requests, for example, or HTTP bin. Yeah, you can see it will increase. In fact, uh, if you keep running this over and over, every one minute it will increase uh, because every one minute Prometheus will be fetching data from it. Now for Loki and Tempo. So for Tempo, if you want to get all the traces and just write an empty query and it will get everything. And click on here and it will show you the trace completely. The attributes and spans, everything is there. But if you go over to Loki, you can close this one as well. Just the really cool thing about this. So again, we have not configured the everything properly for a proper setup. So only one level is available here. But if you do export our TLP here. Yes, so all the logs are here, and the best part about this, again, as I mentioned, the traces are linked. So for each and every log, you can click on tempo here. It will take you to that trace report. Okay, so that's it for this setup. If uh, you've got any questions, drop them in the comments down below, or you can let us know at. Uh, you can even email us at contact at ms.ai. Thank you. Have a nice day.